Hello friends, my name is Sachin Chowan and you are watching video related to the operating system. Hello friends, in this video tutorial we are going to solve a problem based on shortage of first preemptive fashion. Before starting this, know that preemptive means we can break execution of any process at any time. In opposite word, we can say that we can execute a process in a partition fashion. And why it happens? Because there might be the chance after some time when we first allocate a process, after some time new process comes which is of shortest job. And that is the main purpose for using this algorithm. So we try to find out the Gantt chart for this. Gantt chart look like starts from 0 now as in a question arrival time is given so we have to consider the process according to the arrival times so starts from 0 0 check is there any process coming for the time interval of 0 yes there is a process and that is p4 process so allocate p4 process to your system but the question remains is that up to how much time we can execute this p4 so we can execute this P4 until the next job comes. So next job coming for the time interval of 2, that means we can execute this P4 to up to 2. Okay, and which satisfies its execution time. So that means this job goes from your system. Now at time interval of 2, there is another job coming and that is P0 for 3. Okay, so now again check that. That means here P0 can be allocated to CPU. But again the question remains same. That means how much time we can execute this P0. So up to the next job coming and next job is coming at 4. That means we can execute this P0 up to 4. Okay. That means we can remove this P0 and place here one execution time because we have completed this 2 here. Okay. At time interval of 4, next job is coming that is P1 job okay and for the burst time of 6 now at time interval 4 we are having two jobs in a system and we can apply here shortage of first the shortage job is here p0 that means we can schedule here p0 again for next job interval the at i think it's 5 okay there is no job coming up to 5 so we are having p1 remains in your system p0 goes p1 remains we can allocate this p1 up to the 6 okay that means here 1 gets reduced and it becomes 5 okay now check again for the time interval of 6 is there any process yes there is a process and that is p2 process p2 process for 4 okay now again check among these two processes which is the shortage job that is of p2 so allocate p2 for how much time we can execute it depends on next arrival time next arrival time is at 8 that means we can execute this up to 2 that means 6 plus 2 8 and this gets remains 2 ok fine now at time interval of 8 again another job is there that is p3 for 5 ok now check here the highest arrival time is 8 and we have completed here 0 to 8 that means we have completed total arrival times in this Gantt chart. Now we are having 3 processes concurrently in the system and we can apply simply the shortage of first algorithm on this burst times. So the smallest burst time here is P2 so we can execute this P2 up to completion of time that is 2 so 2 8 plus 2 becomes 10. Now we are having P1 and P3 in a system and burst time of both is same. So here we can apply first come first serve algorithm. So P1 comes to your system first that is why we can schedule here P1 for 15 5 10 plus 5 because 15 and this goes out of your system. Now remains P3 for 5 again it is goes from your system 15 plus 5 becomes 20. So it completes your Gantt chart. Okay, if you produce a table for this, the tables becomes like this: P0, P1, P2, P3, 
and P4, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 0 which is given in your question, 3, 6, 4, 5 and 2. Next one is completion time, turnaround time, waiting time and response time. Okay. Now again, the completion time for process P0, check where the process P0 is completing. So, check from right hand side to the left hand side, the last point of P0, last point of P0 is here and that is of 5, that means the completion time for this is a 5. Okay. Now again, for P1, it's 15, for P2, it's 10, for P3, it's 20 and for P4, it's 2. Fine. Now, the formula for turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time. So, turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time. Completion time here is 5, arrival time is 2, that means 5 minus 2, 3. 15 minus 4, that becomes 11. 10 minus 6, 4. 20 minus 8, 12. And 2 minus 0 remains 2. Okay. Now again, waiting time, the formula here is turnaround time minus bus time. So, turnaround time we have calculated here, 3 minus 3, 0, 11 minus 6 becomes 5, 4 minus 4 is 0, 12 minus 5 is 7, 2 minus 2 is 0. Fine. Now here again, response time, how to calculate response time? You know that, first instance, of any process minus arrival time of that process here again so starting from this p0 process so start from left hand side to the right hand side where the p0 occurs first p0 occurs here at 2 that means 2 minus arrival time of p0 process 2 that means the response time of p0 is 0 ok next one is p1 to check here p1 5 it is the response time where the CPU allocates P1 first that is 5, 5 minus 4 remains 1. Again for P2 it is 6, 6 minus 6 0. Again for P3 it is 15, 15 minus 8 remains 7, 15 minus 8 remains 7. Now P4 and P4 start from left hand side is 0, 0 minus arrival time is 0, so response time again is a 0. Okay. Now calculate average turnaround time that is the addition of this 3 plus 11 plus 4 plus 12 plus 2 divided by total number of processes that is 5. So addition is here 32 and divided by 5 becomes near about 6.4 ok and next one is average waiting time that can be calculated from this column 5 plus 7 divided by again total number of processes 5 because remaining are zeros that means we can cal uh, if we are not able to calculate then it is also fine so 7 plus 5 becomes 12 12 divided by 5 and the answer is near about 2.4 something like that ok in this way we can we have completed here shortage job first preemptive fashion ok thank you if you like this video please press like and subscribe button thanks for watching